Hi and welcome to another GC Mysteries video where this time we are taking a look into the murder of Tia Sharp by Stuart Hazel. Okay so everyone uh, in the UK at least remembers the name Stuart Hazel. He was a horrible piece of scum that uh, well, tried to lie his way out of a murder. But as normal, I'll start at the beginning. So it started with the disappearance of 12 year old Tia Sharp on the 2nd of August 2012. Now, she disappeared in New Addington in London um, and Stuart Hazel claimed that she had gone out um, also the neighbour told the police that he'd seen her walk past his window um, going I, think, I believe she was going getting the bus um, at least that's the story that was given but She actually disappeared on the 2nd of August 2012. Funnily enough though, Stuart Hazel told the police that Tia had left the house on the 3rd of August 2012 to travel to Croydon, five miles away from her, uh, the address that she was staying at that time to buy shoes in the Whitgift Centre. On the 7th of August, Tia's uncle, David, made a televised plea for her safe return. Now, 55 sightings were reported by members of the public, but none were substantiated. Um, although every sighting was followed up, uh, none turned out to be her. 80 police officers were assigned to the search and 800 hours of CCTV footage were collected. Uh, this would be from shops, uh, street CCTV, uh, so town centre CCTV, bus CCTV, uh, basically any uh, CCTV that they could get even if it was on uh, private homes um, if it were on a private home and then that was the route that the police had been told she would have taken they would have had to search at CCTV um, and so they amassed all in all 800 hours uh, I wouldn't like to be the police officers going through that but on the 9th of August Stuart Hazel give a gave sorry a uh, interview to Mark Williams Thomas uh, that was for ITB News denying that he had done anything to Tia and praying for her sa safe return um, and he did that um, and part of that uh, interview he stared straight into the camera and uh, referred to Tia as babe now the relationship of Stuart Hazel and Tia Sharp is a bit weird uh, Stuart Hazel had begun a relationship with Tia's mother um, that relationship didn't work out 
um, but then Stuart started dating Tia's mother's mother, so Tia's grandmother. Um, that relationship did work, and so uh, Stuart Hazel to Tia would have been like a grandfather. Um, and so it's a bit weird I don't know how you go from you know dating a woman and then you that don't work out and you start dating her mum I don't get that don't understand it at all but that's what went on now on the 10th of August, a body was discovered in a black bed sheet in a black bag in the loft of the home of Tia's grandmother um, after police visited it and searched it for the fourth time. Now, what is eerie and horrible about this is the interview that Stuart Hazel gave to Mark Williams Thomas on the 9th of August where he was praying for her safe return Tia was actually in that property um, and so when they were talking about things returning back to normal you know Tia coming home and everything going back to normal um, Tia was actually in that place in her grandmother's place uh, in a black bed sheet in a black bin uh, in a black I'm gathering what would have been a black bin liner so Mark Williams Thomas didn't know it at the time but she was there all along now straight away police launched a search for Stuart Hazel and arrested him on suspicion of murder um, that evening at 8.25 p.m. at Cannon Hill Common Morden after a tip-off from a member of the public. It was later announced that two further arrests had been made and that was Tia Sharp's grandmother uh, Christine Bicknell Um, I would assume that's because of where the body was found um, but the third arrest was uh, Christine Bicknell's neighbour uh, Paul Meehan who is the neighbour that said he had seen Tia walked past his window to go and get the bus so he was arrested on so sorry Christine was arrested on suspicion of murder and Paul Meehan was arrested on suspicion of assisting an offender now both uh, Christine and Paul were subsequently bailed and Commander Neil Basu who was the officer in charge of the investigation uh, apologised to Tia Sharp's mother for the delay in finding her daughter's body uh, because they had searched that property three times prior and had never found Tia. Um, now he blamed human error 
and said that a review would be undertaken to ensure such a failing is not repeated. Now, shortly after Stuart Hazel's arrest, memory cards were recovered from Christine Bicknell's residence. One was particularly well hidden in a door frame. Uh, so Stuart went to some quite extreme lengths to hide uh, this particular memory card um, but that was hidden in a door frame on the ground floor of the property. Now police were able to recover images and videos some of which had been deleted. Now Stuart clearly didn't realise that uh, police can recover deleted content. Now, some of the files portrayed Tia in sexuals, uh, sexual positions, sorry, believed to have been taken post-mortem. So, believed to have been taken after Tia's death. Whereas others were voyeuristic images of when Tia was still alive. For example videos of Tia applying moisturizer to her legs were found um, videos or images are both of Tia asleep in her bedroom were found now it has been suggested by a forensic psychologist dr. Kerry Nixon that Hazel may have kept these images for later sexual gratification uh, because Tia clearly saw him as a grandfatherly figure and Stuart saw her as a sexual object to put it politely now, in the early hours of the 12th of August, Stuart Hazel was charged with the murder of Tia Sharp and he appeared before Camberwell Green Magistrates Court on the 13th of August via video link. Um, if you're wondering why it went to magistrates, it's because... Uh, Often a case will go to magistrates and then the magistrates will expedite that case to the Crown Court because they can't deal with such matters. But that's just how it works in the UK. Um, now, no plea was entered and the case was committed to the Old Bailey for trial. Now, if you are wondering what the Old Bailey is, it is a criminal court building in central London um, and is well known for high profile trials, um, things like that. Uh, so really it's a court that is only used if the uh, CPS or the Crown Prosecution Service see that fit now with Tia Sharp's murder being a high profile murder case and um, of course her age and the way she was murdered and all that would go in to uh, deciding where the trial would be but the first appearance in the Old Bailey was on the 15th of August and that was also via video link with a preliminary hearing set for the 19th of 
November and a provisional trial date set for the 21st of January 2013. Now Stuart Hazel was remanded in custody uh, to Balmarsh Prison where he was also kept in isolation uh, for his own safety. Um, and that is because even some of the most evil murderers and some of the most evil people will not stand for the murder of a child. Um, nor will they stand for rape, images, um, videos. So basically Stuart had to be kept in isolation uh, for his own safety um, otherwise I'm 99% sure something would have happened to him uh, so they kept him alone um, but a post-mortem on Tia's body began on the 10th of August and paused later that day. Now, by the 16th of August, the post-mortem had still not been completed, but at an inquest into the death, which opened that day, it was confirmed that the body was that of Tia Sharp and the post-mortem later concluded without establishing the cause of death. Now, uh, this would have been due to decomposition because heat um, and cold uh, temperatures uh, take an effect on decomposition uh, for example heat if it's hot that will speed up decomposition of a body um, whereas the cold will not uh, that will slow down decomposition and so, you know, it, basically because she'd been wrapped up and um, the body had been there for a matter of days, uh, over a week, uh, the heating and the, uh, you know, with it being cold, um, so Stuart would have put the heating on or her grandmother would have put the heating on and um, Tia's decomposition would have been sped up by that. Now, I'm still not clear on whether Tia's grandmother was aware of what uh, Stuart Hazel had done to Tia um, and where Tia was um, but if she wasn't aware I can't imagine the feeling that the way that she would have felt once uh, she found out because that was her home her granddaughter um, and obviously she'd have been completely unaware that Tia was in the property dead um, but it's hard to say really 
I'd like to think that she didn't know. Um, but we'll see deeper into the case. So, experts told this is Croydon today that the delay in finding the body made it much harder to establish the cause of death and that without the cause of death the prosecution would find it much harder to build a case. However, detectives suspected and it was widely reported that Tia Sharp was smothered. Now, I'd like to just note that the cause of death being smothered was not officially uh, was not an official cause of death. This is just speculation um, from news media and in our newspapers that that was the cause of death but it has never officially been proven to be the cause of death. Now it has been suggested by uh, forensic psychologist Dr Kerry Nixon that Hazel may have made sexual advances towards Sia and murdered her when she rebuffed him and threatened to tell her mother. So basically uh, Stuart could have tried getting Tia to uh, be more sexual to him, you know basically said nope I'm gonna go home this is not right I'm gonna tell my mum and that's where the murder came in uh, but we'll never know um, that's just suggestions uh, now on the 23rd of August the police commissioner Bernard Hogan Howe addressed his forces failure to find Sharp's body. He said the error could not be attributed to a single officer and that he wanted to understand what processes and management decisions we've made that led to that failure. Now, Tia Sharp was cremated on the 14th of September after a private family funeral. Now it was announced on the f on the 26th of November 2012 that Hazel would face trial in May 2013 and on the 7th of December the Metropolitan Police announced that Tia's grandmother Christine Bicknell would not face charges. So, um, Christine Bicknell was basically proven to be innocent and uh, she just um, was collateral damage, or at least in Stuart's eyes. Now on the 5th of February 2013, the neighbour Paul Meehan was charged with wasting police time by giving false statements. Now he appeared at Croydon Magistrates Court on the 28th of February 2013 and that is where he denied the charges again well the charge against him and was released on bail for a one day trial on the 29th of July 
Now, Stuart Hazel pleaded not guilty to murder when he appeared in court on the 8th of March 2013 and his trial began on the 7th of May 2013 before Mr Justice Nickel. Now on the 13th of May Hazel changed his plea to guilty and was sentenced to life imprisonment on the 14th of May 2013 uh, with a minimum term and this is one of the longest um, non whole life tariff uh, minimum terms that I've seen of 38 years meaning he will be at least 75 years old before he is eligible for parole now on the 5th of August 2013 uh, the neighbour Paul Meehan was found guilty of wasting police time and was sentenced to five months in prison. Now it's good to note that had he have uh, had he have pleaded guilty he would have got a lesser sentence but because he pleaded not guilty and he had a trial he got longer in prison now the aftermath is that Sharp's biological father, Stephen Carter, announced that he was going to be a father again as his girlfriend was pregnant. Uh, good to know that, you know, she will never, well, he or she will never replace Tia, but he was going to be able to be a proper father again now in July 2013 Carter backed a plan for websites to be told to block certain search terms and warn people when they try to view illegal content um, and in June 2013, the home of Christine Bicknell and Stuart Hazel, where Tia Sharp was murdered, was demolished and in mid-2014 work began on new houses being built on the site. Now in November 2013, Partly in response to the murders of Tia Sharp and April Jones. Um, now, I have already covered April Jones's case. The search engines Google and Bing modified their systems to block results from searches aimed at producing child images and in March 2014, the murder of Tia Sharp was featured in the Crime and Investigation Channel's series Britain's Darkest Taboos as the first episode of Series 3, sorry, which was broadcast on the 16th of March 2014. But if you want to learn more about Tia Sharp um, and you know the good chance at life that she had been given up until um, Stuart Hazel came into her life then you can do you can either search Tia Sharp or Stuart Hazel um, and 
things will uh, show about the case but uh, Stuart Hazel is exactly where he deserves to be and that's all that matters thank you for watching this GC Mysteries video if you liked it please like subscribe and click the notification bell if you can support us on patreon at patreon.com forward slash GC Mysteries see us on Facebook and Twitter GC Mysteries and bye bye for now